Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting special delivery and I'm sipping on some pomegranate tea and if you enjoy this process I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, Mars black, and fluorescent orange. And of course, you can switch up those colors too if you'd like. Uh, for my materials, or for my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'll use from, for some drawing, and then I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, I have a number six round synthetic brush, and I have a number one round synthetic brush, and I refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process, and of course you can switch those up as well. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using, from the large canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint our background. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and the colors I'm using are blue and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it the lightest in the middle, I'll have it like a medium tone up at the top and then I'm going to have it darker down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend myself a medium tone blue. So I've already done it so you can see where I'm headed. So this is the color I'm going for. What I did, I did separate out some of my blue for later because I'm going to need that um, in a later step. So I don't want to mix up all of my ultramarine blue. but. Once I've got a little bit separated out, what I can do is I can slowly start adding white to my ultramarine blue. What I'm looking to do is just get a nice soft um, blue color. I don't want it too, too light because I want to have the opportunity to make it lighter as I go down towards that center without it going fully white. So this is about the shade that I'm going for. You can make yours lighter or darker, whatever works for you. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up at the top of my canvas, applying it with just a left to right brush stroke. You don't really need to do any perfect brush stroke for this. This is just um, a way to apply it in a nice kind of um, uniform type of way so, it, uh, so I get a similar coverage all along the canvas. So I'm going to bring this down, I would say about a third of the way down my canvas, this um, pre-mixed light blue color, medium blue that we have. And then once I've got it down this far, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up white on my dirty brush and give myself a pretty light area in the middle. So I just picked up white on my dirty brush and I'm going to get myself a light area right through this center area. So this is going to give me um, some good dimension in that sky so it will allow it to look like it like we're going down from the deep area of the the top of the sky down towards that horizon and maybe just a little bit more white on my brush just to bring this down just a little bit further and I'm just doing kind of like a crisscross type of motion to get these two sections to blend in and then you can just kind of go left to right that'll give you a nice a nice gradual blend. I'm picking up just a little bit more uh, white paint just so I can make sure that I have this down as far as I want. I'm going about 
um, almost another third of the way down with this lighter color. And then in a second, I'm gonna start adding darker colors as I go down towards the where we're gonna have the cloud um, area that our bird is flying over. So now that I'm about here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start picking up my um, uh, medium blue plus my ultramarine blue on my brush. I did not wash my brush, um, so this way I will have it gradually going a little bit darker as it comes down towards the bottom of my canvas. So right now, again, the medium blue plus ultramarine blue on my brush, just to get these two sections to blend in with one another. This is gonna be the um, where the light area meets this pretty dark area. And again, just kind of getting those two sections to blend in with one another without going up too high in the sky. So I'm keeping my blend pretty um, minimal in through here. It doesn't have to be a perfect blend. You're gonna have lots of clouds and atmospheric dimension on top of this. So don't worry about it not being perfect. Just kind of getting them to intermingle with one another um, works out just fine. And then once I've got that area on, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pick up ultramarine blue for the rest of the canvas. So I'm just going to pick up um, my ultramarine blue, get this to go all the way down to the bottom of my canvas, getting it to blend in a little bit with that medium tone that we had just put on there. And then once you've got this step done, we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. And again, you can see I'm not doing a perfect blend in through here, just getting them all to really talk to, to each other really well. And then I will wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint atmosphere in our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. I do recommend that you make sure that your canvas is dry before you start this step. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to. Or you can find some kind of fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out a blow dryer. So I want this bird to appear that it's flying over the clouds. So we're going to be putting the clouds in down below on a future step, but I wanted to add some atmospheric dimension to the to the upper part of the sky so it just looks like there's lots of, you know, stuff happening in the atmosphere. So that's what we're going to do now. You can picture it to be a sunrise or a sunset. I just wanted to put a little bit more mood into my sky. So I'm using my large bristle brush. I'm not going to use a lot of paint on my brush. and I'm going to be using like a scrubbing type of technique. I'm going to have it a little bit darker over here and it's just going to kind of fade with some soft browns and oranges until I come over in through here and then I'll just kind of get it to blend into the sky itself. I'll probably have it at like of a, a diagonal type of a shape in through here, um, but you could certainly make yours whatever way you want. I'm gonna be using blue, orange, and white to do this. When I mix the blue and the orange on the canvas, it's gonna be a nice brownish type of color. You could certainly use brown in this process if you wanted to, but I find that these colors are gonna do what I want them to do. So I'm gonna put a little bit of blue and orange on my brush at the same time. And I'm just gonna kind of start rubbing it in this circular type of motion. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of orange and white on my brush. So not a lot of paint, just a little bit on my brush just to give, the, give it this nice soft appearance. You might find that your brush is, uh, is firmer than mine or softer than mine, whatever um, it kind of density it is or firmness it is, you can certainly work out um, the, the scrubbing type of effect on the, on the sky. Once you get into an area where you're, you're ready to start intermingling it with the blue, you can certainly pick up some of your sky blue. I'm not quite there yet, so I'm still just picking up a little bit of orange and white. I might pick up a little bit more of my ultramarine blue in a minute, but I just really want this to be nice and soft and kind of intermingle with that sky a little bit. You can certainly 
um, add more of any color that is speaking to you because there are no two skies alike in this world. So you could certainly add um, different information and different colors into it if you wanted to. So I'm feeling like this is pretty good. I'm gonna start picking up my sky blue now, which I might not have said I was gonna use, but I'm picking up some of my sky blue right now just to get these colors to, to get my top area to work its way down into that regular um, area of the sky. And again, this is one of those preferences that you might find that you really like the, the, the drama of that orangey type of color and you wanna add more to it or less to it. So it's gonna be a preference on your part. I just picked up some of my sky blue plus a teeny tiny bit of white paint on my brush just so I can get this to get a little bit lighter as it's coming down in through here. And I just am continuing to pick up that sky blue right now. Just making sure that I have a nice second coverage or second coat on the entire sky area so it doesn't look like I have missed anything and it looks like I've paid the same kind of attention everywhere on the sky as opposed to just doing a second layer up here. This will make it all talk to one another and make it look like it, um, it is working together. I'm picking up a little bit more white so I can get these to um, intermingle with that light area of the sky, but I'm not necessarily looking for it to be too cloudy right now up in through here. I just want it to be have a nice soft atmospheric kind of um, glow to it. So as it's gonna be working its way into the clouds down below, it'll, it'll make sense to me. So now I'm just keep picking up my sky blue plus maybe a little bit of white, again, just to get it to um, gradually go into this lighter area down below. And then you just kind of keep fiddling with it. If you let it dry for a minute, see if you want it to go lighter or darker or softer, or maybe you want to see more evidence of um, the moving clouds up above, totally up to you. And then once you've got it in the way that you want, we are going to be utilizing the same large brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint our clouds. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm gonna be using are white, orange, and blue, the ultramarine blue, and maybe some of my sky blue too, but I'll call them out as I'm, as I'm ready to use them. So what I'm gonna do is I want the top of the clouds, now we're looking down at these clouds, so they're just gonna be all billowy and fluffy and like, like cotton or something. But what I want is I want the top of them to kind of be on the lighter side. And as it comes towards the bottom of the canvas or towards the viewer, I'm gonna have it just a little bit darker. So that way it's gonna imply that our light source is over off in the distance a little bit. So I'm going to be um, utilizing kind of a rubbing or a circular type of technique. I'm gonna have my clouds a little bit lighter at the top and they're gonna come down towards darker at the bottom. So I'm gonna start with just white paint on my brush. I'm gonna start at the back of the clouds and work my way forward so I can kind of build them in front of one another. So I have white paint on my brush right now and I'm gonna bring this up maybe about halfway up my canvas on this right hand side or a little bit higher than that. It's gonna to be totally up to you. And then I'm just, I can just kind of create these bright edges to these um, clouds with that white paint on my brush. I'm gonna make it a little bit more shallow in through here so that way it looks like it kind of like dips down just a little bit in through there and then I'm just gonna kind of bring them across. As I come over to this left hand side, I'm gonna start picking up some of my sky blue with the white as well so that way I've got a little bit more of a transition. Maybe that's my lightest area over in through there. But again, you can really make your clouds into whatever brightness or darkness you want. I'm, And again, I'm just kind of using this circular type of brush stroke in order to get these, um, this roundness to the tops of them. And then as I come down, my canvas. You don't need a ton of paint on your brush in order to give the appearance of the the fluffiness of the top of the clouds, but I am utilizing some of my sky blue at this point um, on top of my um, my base color in through here, just so it's not one dimensional. I want to be able to have 
um, those light spots and dark spots. So I just picked up a, again a little bit more of my sky blue plus white. I'm keeping some of the little um, darker areas in between the clouds as well and I'm just building them in this bumpy type of a fashion. Think of maybe a whole bunch of soft little hills that you're creating. And then once I get down about this far, I'm going to start utilizing my orange and a little bit of my ultramarine blue on my brush at the same time on my dirty brush and this is going to provide me with some of those complementary colors to what has happened at the top of the canvas. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white so I can get some lightness to the tops of these and you want to try and make it so it's not systematic. So as you're coming down towards these bottom ones, make them bigger, make them have a lot more volume to them, make them look not so um, distinct. Maybe there, maybe there's a little bit more softness to them. When you have that remnants on your brush, maybe you put a little bit in, in one of the previous clouds just so you can carry the colors for, through one another. I just picked up white plus my, um, a little bit of orange plus the sky blue. So I can, again, just have some diversity in the clouds over in through here. And I'm just really looking for some fluffiness. I'm, again, just going to pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue and my orange so they can get maybe a little bit darker as it's coming down the base of the um, canvas. And you don't have to do yours in the same exact color order that I'm doing. I'm just going for this, you know, this you know soft type of look that's complementary to what I did up above I'm really just kind of um, alternating colors at this point with my blue my or my two blues my orange and my white so I can get these to look as fluffy as I want I just added a bit more white to my brush now I'm gonna look for some light spots and maybe enhance those so I'm working with a dirty brush, I'm working with those four colors, and I'm just utilizing this circular type of technique to give myself the illusion that we are looking at these clouds from above, and we're flying over them along with this beautiful bird, and I just kind of keep fiddling with it until I feel like I've got the dimension that, that I'm going for, maybe a little bit extra lightness on here. My lightness on the clouds is typically towards the top of them. So if I feel like I want to lighten up a little bit more towards the top of one of the clouds, I just go in with a little lighter variation of that particular color. And then I would let it dry and I'd, I'd look at it from a distance and see if there's any little modifications that I want to do. And if so, I would go ahead and um, make those modifications. And then we are going to be utilizing our pencil for the next step. So have fun finishing up with your clouds. Make them as fluffy and as beautiful as you'd like them to be. And then once you've got this done, you can put this large brush away, take out your pencil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to be doing for the next step is we're going to be drawing an outline for our stork and its parcel. <laughs> so this is going to be the, the carrying container that the stork is using to deliver the baby in. So I'm going to be using my pencil. I do want to suggest that your canvas is dry before you do this step because, of course, it's easier to dry to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. So I'm going to be guiding you through a series of very basic shapes. We're not going for any fine-tuned detail here. We're just looking for something, some kind of shape that'll be easy to start the painting process of these elements with. So I'm going to start with my bird. Typically when I teach people to do birds, I uh, recommend that we start for, with the body, you can always start with the shape of an egg, and the head you can always start with the shape of a circle. The necks are different, the lengths are different, and stuff like that, but you can generally start all birds in that fashion. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start the body with a really long, e elongated kind of um, egg type of shape. I'm having my bird flying in that direction. When you're doing the egg shape for the body, the pointy part is going to be at the tail. So I'm going to have my um, 
back end of my bird is going to go this way and the front end is going to go that way. So I'm going to have a wider part of the egg on the right hand side. So what you'll want to do is kind of find yourself the center of your canvas, top to bottom and left to right. So my center is right about here. I'm going to make myself a mark about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch to the left of that. So somewhere in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the left of that about three inches or so, somewhere in through here, and then down about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. So this is going to be the pointy part. That's going to be the, this will be the front part of it. I'm going to connect these, this to here with an arcing motion that way and that way, but I'm going to have it about an inch and a half wide at the widest part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this up like this and then just bring it back down here and then I'll do the same thing over on this side. So I'm just gonna bring it down like this and then just back up just a little bit. Yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Mine might not be the, the exact shape of an egg, but something along that line will, will work. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from the right of this mark that I made here, about an inch and a half to two inches, make myself a little bit of a mark. I'm gonna go up from that almost an inch about that high. This is going to be a little bit higher than the top of my egg. So just to give you a reference point. And then I'm going to make myself a little circle. This is going to be represent the, the head portion or give us get us started on the head. So something along this line will get you started. I'm going to connect my egg to my body. So I'm going to go from about the bottom part of my um, my circle, my head, and I'm going to bring it up just a little bit and I'm going to get this to go gradually into the body like that. And then on the top part, I'm going to bring it down just like this. And then this is going to scoop up into the back. So something like that will we'll do that. I'm going to give myself a beak. So I'm going to go from the right of the bottom of my circle. I'm going to go over maybe about two inches or so and just up just a teeny tiny bit, maybe about an eighth of an inch. That's going to be the beak or the tip of my beak. I'm going to connect this to the bottom portion of my circle, something like that. And then I'm going to connect it to the top part, but I'm going to come towards my circle and then scoop it up. So this is going to give me a little bit of um, more of a decline on the top part of the head than the bottom part. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself some legs out the back. So how I'm going to do this is I'm going to extend this pointy part of the um, body in through here like this. This will be like the thigh area. And I'm just going to bring this directly kind of, a it's a little bit at a diagonal, straight back till I would say I'm right about maybe about three inches away from the edge of my canvas. And then I'm just going to kind of make myself a couple little marks where I'm going to want those toes to be. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. It'll shift shape when we um, paint. The leg will be a little bit thicker too when we paint. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of wings on. So I'm going to have uh, one wing going way off in this direction and then one wing in this direction. So I'm going to work on the far one first. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of a marker right in through here. So this is almost to the um, directly above this mark here, maybe a little bit to the left, something like that. And then I'm going to give myself another marker way up here. So this, if I go straight up from my from my head, I'm just a little bit to the left of that and maybe about three inches or so, three or four inches from the top of my canvas, something like that. I'm going to connect these two with a nice arcing type of a line like this, maybe scoop it in just a little bit at where it's meeting the body in through there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself about halfway in this egg in through here, right about here. I'm going to go diagonal about an inch to right about here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here to here with some ripple wings. We're going to be making this much better when we um, when when we paint it in, but this kind of just gives me an idea of how I want the the formation or the the exterior kind of profile of the wing to go. So I'm just kind of giving myself these messy kind of ripply type of lines, just so I have somewhere to to play with when I go to paint in that, that base coat. Then on the left hand side, I'm going to be going from this marker in through here, 
That's going to be um, the top side of the wing. And then I'm going to bring the bottom side to right about in through here. So this is a little bit to the left in a diagonal way from the corner of the egg. I'm going to do the, the point of my wing is going to be right about here. So this is lower by about an inch or two from the tip of that one. And I'm, and I'm almost as far out as the edge of my feet. So maybe an inch shy of there goes straight up and it's a little bit shorter than that. So I'm going to connect here to here with um, maybe a couple, maybe one short wing in like that and then just a big curve to get to this front, this top one. And then I'm going to give myself again some kind of ripply type of formation for my, for my wings or for the tips of the wings. I think I want these, I think I want this one a little bit shorter. This is the beauty of pencil. You get to, you get to erase things. I think I want a couple of shorter ones in here. <laughs> Sorry. When I see it, it's like, oh, well, maybe I want to do it this way. So that's good like that. And then I'll just kind of give myself these little bumps down in through here. And then, of course, you can adjust those. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the carrying, um, parcel outline. <laughs> so I'm going to go a little bit back from the tip of the, of the um, beak and give myself a couple of little marks in through here that'll indicate the, the cloth kind of tie or string. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come straight down from here. I'm going to give myself a marker that's maybe about three inches from the bottom of my canvas, somewhere in through there. That's going to tell me how far to go. Now, when I do this, I'm going to be doing a rounded type of shape. It does not have to be perfectly symmetrical. There's a supposedly a baby inside there, so it would be all wobbly. But what you want to do is kind of have it wider down at the bottom at, than at the top, so it looks like the baby is in there and providing some form or shape to it. So I'm going to start up in through here, then just give myself a curved line, and maybe it's a little flatter on the bottom, so that'll indicate again that the weight of the, the baby is kind of pulling it down and giving it kind of a flat spot down there. And then you can do any little fiddling and adjusting you want. We're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step, so you can put your pencil away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the base coat for our stork and its parcel. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. The colors I'm using are brown and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pre-mix myself a tan color, or I've already done it. I'll just tell you how, I'll show you how I did it. So this is the tan color that I'm going for. I did separate out some of my white because I'm gonna need a little bit of that later. So what I did was I used some white and just a little bit of brown paint and mix them together. I'm just going for a real nice neutral kind of um, medium to light tan. This is gonna provide me with a great base for both of these items. So once I've got the color that I want, I'm not gonna be doing anything too fancy, just painting in each of these sections with these colors. So I'm going to be doing going all the way to my pencil, giving myself some uneven kind of edges to my to my wings in through here. So when I get to the edges um, where I've made these little squiggly lines, I just kind of bring my brush out a little bit and make my, my edges uneven. They don't have to be perfect. They, we're gonna be giving a whole bunch of information during the, um, during the detail painting process and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other wing. So I just kind of bring it up to the tip and then just kind of bring out these, um, these fun little edges. They don't have to be all the same size. That's the beautiful part about this bird as I was looking at the, the different variations of it. Some have lots of, um, the tips of their wings are going in kind of a carefree, chaotic, way which is was kind of fun to me because uh, some birds have very systematic and organized looking um, wings and then this bird some of the pictures I was seeing the the wings are a little tattered and they go in, in different directions so that was that was a fun thing so if your edges are not perfect don't worry about that and then I'm just kind of giving myself a nice 
coat in through there and then the body itself you can paint right over that egg shape we'll be defining that with some strategically placed highlights and shadows when we get into that um, stage when I come down to the leg I'm going to make it a little bit wider than just that line that we had done with the pencil so I'm just going to kind of push my brush a little bit firmer just to give myself a little bit more width but not a lot and then give myself a couple of toes you can even bump out the front of the foot a little bit so it almost looks like it's curved and then just bring in a couple of these um, little toes coming out and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and color the the um, neck and the body in through here when I get to the um, the beak area I'm just going to slow down but and and so I can keep the point to that beak but if you're going about it and you feel like you need to utilize your smaller brush to make sure that you've got this um, nice point to the beak then feel free to just switch brushes that's totally fine wherever your comfort zone is is where you should where you should stay while you're you know painting those kind of details and then I just kind of slow down to so I can keep the the shape of my pencil and if you can still see some of your pencil through your paint don't worry about that because we have we have plenty of, of steps left to go to um, cover up that pencil I'm just slowing down a little bit making sure my my brush is as pointy as I want it so I can control it along these along these edges and then the um, the main section here doesn't need any any fancy technique just get it colored in you can even just bring it right into and over that beak because you're going to be painting this cloth part of this um, parcel is going to go on top of the beak so you can you know obviously we're using the same color for the base coat which is going to provide us a nice warm um, and neutral and natural base to both of these objects um, so when you go to do that piece over the beak just paint right over it. oops my my parcel is getting a little bit bigger as we speak <laughs> and then once you've got this done we are going to be utilizing the small brush for the next step so you can finish this up put the large or the put the medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint facial features and bird legs. <laughs> I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are orange, brown, white, and black. And I'm going to start with the facial features first, and then we'll work our way to the legs. I'm not doing much detail. I'm just kind of giving the um, information that is going to be nice and representational of these birds. So I put a little bit of black paint on my brush to start. I'm going to do my eye first so this is kind of on the right side of where we made that that initial circle I'm just gonna give myself a real small circular type of shape you can certainly make yours bigger if you want to or smaller it's gonna be up to you the amount of detail that you want to do on that then I just wipe it off on my paper towel I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown paint and put a little bit of um, a shadowy kind of area around the exterior part of that eye and you can always if it goes too dark for you like I feel like that's a little too dark I'm picking up some of my original tan uh, the tan color that I used for the base just to kind of dull that down a little bit there we go and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I wipe my brush off I'm picking up a tiny bit of white paint I'm just gonna give a little twinkle in the eye down at the bottom portion of that eye I'm going to wash and dry my brush now and I'm going to pick up orange paint to paint the the beak so I know that I'm going to have the the um, cloth from um, the the parcel so I'm just going to skip a little spot where I want that cloth to appear and I'm going to paint the rest of the beak with this orange color I am going to bring this into the face a little bit so this beak will come into the face a little bit go up that forehead just a little bit and again I just have the orange paint on my brush right now to get it into here that I um, 
I'm going to be doing kind of a rough edge where it meets the, the face because I'll put a little bit more detail on that in a second. So now that I've got the orange on there, I'm just going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up a touch of black and brown on my brush to give myself a little bit of details here. So I'm going to give a little bit of um, shadowy type of details as that beak kind of meets the face. So I'm really just lightly with a sketcherly type of way, putting some details um, with the black and the brown on my brush, right as it's meeting the um, the face in through here. And I'm gonna put it a little bit coming back in through here. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of a, of a line towards the bottom portion of the beak. This is gonna indicate the part of the beak that just opens up so our, so our bird can have that ability. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wipe or wash my brush so I can put a little bit of a highlight on that beak. So I washed and dried my brush. Now I'm going to pick up orange plus white on my brush at the same time. And I'm just going to put little bits of, of highlights in through um, the beak. So this way it looks like there's a bit of um, form to it. So it's not flat and we've got all of the information that we want. I think maybe a little bit of, um, I'm going to put just a tiny bit more of the darkness down towards the bottom so we can have a little bit more of shape. So I just put a little black and brown on my brush. Just make sure I've got enough in through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, move on to my feet. Just picking up a little bit more orange first though. I'm gonna move on to my feet. So um, I'm gonna be using orange on my brush. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna um, bring it just a little bit back this thigh area somewhere in in this vicinity have a messy kind of line where it's going to meet the the fur from the body and then again i'm just using my orange i think i had a little bit of uh brown on my brush and just painting the entire area with the orange first similar to how we did the beak and this is going to give you the illusion of some some um, realistic color to it. Now I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of brown and maybe just a teeny bit of black. Be careful with the black because it can easily take over. And I'm just gonna give myself, again, just a little bit of this shadowy entry um, detail where it's meeting the feathers on the, on the leg, maybe a little bit of a shadow up on this top side of the leg, and then maybe a little bit of the brown and black in between those toes a little bit so it looks like we've got a little bit of information uh, in between those maybe we've got some some shadows or something in between those I'm not a stork um, foot expert so I might have um, a different number of toes but I'm assuming that we are perfectly seeing this side of the bird and we can't see the other foot <laughs> so if you want yours to have more information or a second foot you can certainly do that I'm washing and drying my brush now and putting a little bit of orange and white on my brush to give myself a little highlight on this bottom side of the leg. So again, this is just orange and white and maybe a little bit on the knuckly area of the, of the foot. And you could certainly bring out a little bump if you wanted there to look like there's a knee on the um, bird. I think there's one like somewhere in this vicinity, but again, I'm not an expert, so don't quote me on that one. <laughs> and then you can make any little fiddling, adjusting marks that you feel are necessary. And we are going to be utilizing our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to finish our bird. So we'll finish the body and the wings. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, white, my tan, probably a little bit of brown, and maybe some orange and blue too. <laughs> I'll let you know what I'm gonna be using when I use it. So what I'm gonna do is I, am, I definitely need to give myself kind of an area where this wing stops. So I'll be m making sure that I do that. We're gonna see the underside of this wing and the top side of this wing. So they're gonna look a little bit different. And then the body, I'm gonna have kind of a highlighted area at the bottom of the bird. So it indicates that it's being illuminated by whatever that light source is over there. And then um, it'll have some shadowing and stuff as well. So what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna make my Myself a shadowy kind of color so what I've done is I've taken my tan 
and you can add a touch of brown and a touch of black to it and just make it into this medium to dark neutral kind of gray color. The brown helps to again neutralize it so it's not too um, too dull of a color so that will help to get it to be nice and rich of a tone against that bird. So once you've got the color that you're looking for you can even put a little blue or a little of the orange in it as well if you want to turn it into a unique type of tan or uh, shadowy color. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself um, a, a, an outline for this bottom wing. So I know that I've got this wing, this little pop-up place in through here. I'm going to bring this down to about the same height as this marker, as this wing in through here. That's going to give me um, an equal kind of bridge in through there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it back towards this, um, towards this back leg in through here. And then I'm going to take this color and I'm just going to rub it up. I'm going to let myself run out of paint on my brush so that way I am giving myself a nice natural kind of um, progression from the, the, from the shadow into whatever is going to be happening up in through here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going for something that's going to provide me with that, um, that shadowy color underneath there. Then what I'm going to do, I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that, um, that gray color, that dark gray that we got, that, that we made, plus my tan. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a little bit away from this edge in through here. So right, oh, I need a little bit more of that tan on my, or the gray, right into this area in through here. And I'm going to bring this right up into this, um, I'm in essence kind of separating the body away from this wing in through here. I'm going to take it, and this should be a little bit lighter than here, so if it's not, you'll want to pick up more of that tan, the light tan, and you're going to do the same thing. So you're just going to kind of rub it in and let it fade out into the, um, the neighboring area. So just keep picking up that original tan until you feel like you've got a good blend. Again, this should be a little bit lighter than in through here. So now that I've got that on there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my body in through here. So I'm going to pick up some white paint without washing my brush, and I'm going to put a little highlight on this chest area in through here, and the chest and the bottom of, of the body. I'm also going to put a, a little bit on the bottom part of the face in through here. And I'm just going to kind of rub my brush until I feel that it is blending in with that tan color. If it's not blending the way that you want, I just picked up some of that tan and get them to blend in together. So again, white to start and then pick up some of that tan in order to get it to blend in a little bit more if you feel the need to. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of finish up the top of this body. I want the it to look like it's got a little bit of a um, shadow up at the top of the body and blending into this light part. So I just picked up some of my gray plus some of my tan. And this will give me a kind of a, a bridge between those two sections. And it'll be a little bit darker at the top. You can even use that the dark gray to give yourself some little information down here, which will be the feathers that are going to meet the leg in through there. And then I'm just going to kind of get this to rub out. And again, this is going to be my lightest area in through here. So I just am working towards that. So I rubbed it out. I'm picking up some of my original tan just to get it to blend in. And of course, you can keep finessing that. I think actually I'm going to pick up some more white to get this chest area to be a little bit brighter. So my goal is to just give this bird some good form and make the bird look like it's nice and round. And in order to do that, I've got to have this contrast in colors where um, going from the light to the dark. So I've got to use my my um, my tonal values to make sure that it it progresses from the light to the dark and that's looking pretty good to me maybe a little bit more white on this cheek in through here so it will get that progression in through there and then if you felt you needed any on the front of the head you could certainly do that as well so my wings there's some nice black wings tips black tips to the wings and then it comes into these lighter feathers almost white feathers along um, the the 
uh, front side of that wing. So that's what I'm going to um, attempt to do here. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm going to start with just black paint on my brush and I'm going to give myself where the black wings or fe feathers would be. So I've got black on my brush and I'm just going to kind of pull this in. You can use a little bit of water on your brush as well to give you some nice kind of um, smooth transitions. I'm bringing it back towards the um, this uh, this area in through here and then I'm just kind of utilizing the um, the black on my brush right now to give myself the 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 tips of those feathers that are black and I'm going to just bring them maybe about an inch or so in through this area utilizing the original footprint that I had for those tips and you can if you can still see some of the gray underneath that's fabulous that's what's going to make it look a little bit more realistic we'll add a little highlight to them in a minute and we'll also um, bring a little bit more brightness in through there but I'm just going to start with black to to get them going same thing on this side I've got um, the tip of this one is going to be a little black we've got this one and sometimes you got to push your brush a little bit harder if you want it to be as wide as you want um, but that's going to be maybe you even use a, a wider brush too if you want your wings to or your feathers to look a little bit more um, full so to speak but again we'll be adding we'll be adding a little bit of a highlight onto them in a minute so that'll make them look more realistic as well and of course you can use the bit of that black paint or uh, water on your brush as well in order to give you the fluidity in in those um, in those feathers so now that I've got them on what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding a little bit of highlight to them. I want this to definitely look like it's transcending into this dark area so you can pull those pieces in there a little bit. That's going to help to again make it look a little bit more realistic. I'm just going to be using um, my gray and my tan as the little highlight colors throughout um, these feathers and I'm going to do more on this side than I am this side because this is the underside of the wing and this is the top side so this would be catching a little bit more light so I am going to use black plus my tan and my gray on my brush at the same time this is going to give me a beautiful transition of these um, colors and make them all look like they belong together and that they are you know being highlighted by the sun or by whatever the um, exterior atmosphere is if you you know if you feel that you want more of one color than the other feel free to to do that if it's too light just put a little bit more black on your brush and that's going to help to give that diversity in those wing um, colors and again this one I'm going to be using more black so I'm just picking up black plus the dark gray on my brush and this will keep these a little bit darker than the ones on the right hand side and then I'm going to wash and dry my brush and put a little bit of a highlight on the edges of those wings so wash and dry my brush I'm going to pick up some white paint and I really want this edge to be nice and bright so I this is all white on my brush right now and then what I'll do once I've got it on here is I'm going to pull it up in the direction of the wing so I'm going to sit here and I'm going to pull it up and away from here but in the direction of the wing so maybe a little bit of rubbing action but definitely in the direction of the or in the direction of the feather I should say so that way it looks like it's these little white ones might be overlapping we've got a great highlight on the edge here and if it goes too white for you just pick up some of that original tan like I just picked up white plus my original tan so that's going to give me this tran this gradual transition into the darker area and you can always pick up that um, shadowy color too so whatever you need to do in order to get it to gradually kind of go into this shadowy area feel free to do so and then I just need a little bit of a highlight on this one right here so again just white is where I'm starting maybe actually white with my tan white with my tan to give me this little 
um, highlight for, for this particular wing in through here. And then I would just kind of, again, w let it dry, see if there's any little adjusting things that I want to do. I might, you know, opt to come back and make sure I've got all of these little wings as detailed as I wanted, may, you know, maybe a little bit more black in through here. So those are the little touches that I would just kind of do as it's drying. Um, you can certainly do the same thing on your end. We are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful bird done, make any little adjusting um, things that you want and then just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish this piece of cloth parcel. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are brown, black, white, and my tan. So what I'm in essence gonna do is I, I wanna give a little bit of an opening, um, a visible opening up in through here, and then I'm gonna be providing highlights and shadows in order to tell the form of this. So I'll put some shadows on this back left side. I'll put some little highlights and stuff and shadows up in the, where the little rope is up and through here. And then I'll put some highlights in through here to show that it bumps out a little bit. So I'm gonna start with my dark stuff. I'm gonna um, put a little bit of black paint on my brush. I'm gonna give myself a little shadowy area right as it's meeting the um, the beak. This is gonna make it look like there's a little bit of an opening in the, um, in the canvas of the um, parcel. <laughs> so it'll make it look more three-dimensional and more realistic. I'm leaving a little bit of the left edge of that, um, of that tan color. And I'm gonna bring this, this opening down a little bit past my body of my bird, so that way it'll give it a good, nice, strong opening for um, for this thing. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take I'm, that remnants that I have on my brush, just put a little bit of a shadow up here on this tie, like that. Then I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, and I'm gonna pick up brown. So I have black and brown on my brush right now. I'm gonna go down on this left-hand side, of this um, cloth area like this. And then I'm just gonna rub this dark color in down on this bottom left-hand side. Once I've got that started, now I'm gonna pick up some of my tan with my dirty brush and get these two colors to just kind of blend in with one another. So this is gonna give me a gradual um, progression to the lighter side. I'm gonna pick up more of my tan color, and while I still have a little bit of the remnants of that dark darkness on my brush, I'm gonna utilize that to my advantage and just maybe put a couple of little darker areas, like ripples um, in, the, in the cloth in through here, so that'll make it look even more realistic. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some white paint on my dirty brush. So I have the, my, my dirty brush plus a little bit of white. I think there was something else on my brush there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself some little highlights. So I'm gonna have up by the tie, I have a little highlight in through here, maybe a little highlight over in through there. You can have your highlights as bright as you want them to be. I keep picking up a little bit of orange. The, the um, downfalls of a messy palette is I keep getting extra colors on my brush that I'm not, that I'm not wanting. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just pulling some of this bright color down this right hand side, and then I'm gonna get a big bright area in through here and just rub it out into the, um, into the, the cloth. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my tan in a second here to get this all to blend in. So I have my dirty brush, I'm picking up my tan, and now I'm gonna get this all to just kind of work together and make it look like we've got the biggest part kind of popping out in through here, which is gonna tell me that that's where the, the baby is, as well as maybe um, the it's catching some light from whatever that light source is. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white paint just so I can highlight this left area over here. So that helps to kind of identify that that's got a little bit of um, 
form to it as well. So if you feel like there's any spots that look flat to you and you want to add a little bit of form to it, just add a little bit lighter of a color or a little bit darker of a color and get it to blend into um, the neighboring um, the neighboring color and what that'll do is the lighter the color the more it's going to pop out the darker the color the more it's going to recede so you can play with those um, tonal values in order to inject form into into that particular object and then you just kind of keep fiddling with it if you feel like you need to add more to the shadow or more to the highlight feel free to do so and then we're going to be utilizing our small brush for the next step so you can put your medium brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint a couple of cute little baby feet. I'm going to be using my small brush. The colors that I'm going to use are orange, brown, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a little bit of a skin color. So I've already mixed mine so you can see where I'm headed with it. So how I got to this color was I utilized just a little bit of white, a good amount of my orange, so maybe, you know, maybe equal parts of those and then some of my brown as well. And then I just started spinning it around. So you might find like that's a little bit too light for me. So I would end up adding a little bit more of my orange and a little bit more of my brown and just kind of keep fiddling with it until you feel that you've got a pretty good representation of the skin tone that you would like. So this is looking pretty, pretty good to me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a couple of little baby feet. <laughs> so I've got my skin color on. Um, so just kind of imagine where the body would be in here. You don't want your feet sticking way up here because your body in essence is going to be down here. So if I've got my head here and my back and my butt, maybe my legs are kind of up in a kneeling type of, you know, with the knees up, something like that. <laughs> so I'm going to just really make myself a little bit of a triangle type of mark coming out in through here for one foot. So something like that. The um, right side of it is going to represent the big toe. And then my next little foot in through here, you can kind of almost do like a little L to start it. And then that's going to be the, the uh, big toe just bring it down in kind of a diagonal type of a way and then just bring it um, down past your L type or your backwards L and then I'm going to bring it up like a little ankles coming out of here with a little heel so you can you know have fun with making the shape whatever way you want I'm just utilizing the tip of my brush to give myself the essence of a little cute foot and once I've got it in the shape that I want, I can start adding little shadows and highlights. So I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my um, paper towel. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of brown paint to give, I don't really need a shadow on this top foot, but maybe on this um, bottom one, since we see a little bit of the ankle, I can put a little bit of a shadow where it's coming out of the, um, of the bag or of the parcel, whatever you want to call it, maybe even a couple of little dots in between the toes or something up by the toe. Oh, I can do that on the other foot too. Just a couple of little dots, you know, up where the toes meet the, the foot themselves. Then I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to pick up some of my skin tone plus white on my brush just to give myself these little kind of highlights on the tips of the toes and on the side of the foot so white plus my skin color and you might find that you want to do more to yours or less to yours whatever works out just kind of go slowly and just do it a little bit at a time and if it, again if you do too much just wait for it to dry putting a little highlight on the on the right side of this foot something like that and then maybe a little bit on the leg itself and then you just fiddle with it until you feel like you've got your cute tiny little feet the way that you want. And then we're going to be utilizing this uh, same brush for the next step. I'm putting a little ankle bone on here too. Little cute baby ankle bone. There we go. <laughs> and then I'm going to wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. 
All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I think I'm going bottom left on this one and I'm gonna sign mine with black paint. You could sign yours with whatever color you want. I sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is totally fine. It's your painting, you get to sign it however you'd like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a beautiful bird with its special gift delivery. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.